Let's continue the journey in Reaper's Preferences tab path. If this type of video is useful to you, share it because it may be also useful to other people besides you and your support counts. Control or Command MP or in case uh, options preferences, select path and here we have several optional paths that can be set. There are five fields available and all optional. Let's see what each field is for. The first is used to specify the default path to save the new project. If you have established that all projects must go to a specific folder, choose it by clicking on Browse, navigate until you find it, select it and click OK. I choose the one you see, which I created for this tutorial and click OK or Apply. From now on, whatever project is created, when you save it, it is automatically placed in the selected directory, as I'm doing now. You can use this feature to select a disk in which you only have projects. You are therefore sure to save everything on that specific disk, without having to search for it every time. If the directory is not specified, the files are saved in the default one, which is in Documents, Reaper, Media. The second field is the default path for rendering. If blank, it renders in the project folder, if any. The path can be given relative or absolute. The relative one is highly recommended, so that during rendering, the specific folder is created inside the project folder, and inside the rendering folder, the rendered file is placed. I show you an example. Here, I insert a MIDI type item and uh, render it. As soon as I open the rendering window, as you can see, the rendering folder is created and in it, the file is placed. Then I click on rendering and check in the inside the project folder. I find the rendering folder and inside it, I find the rendered file as expected. The third field sets the path for saving audios when the project has not been saved and when no path is configured. By default, this field is empty, so any recording you make, here an example track 1, Reaper saves it in a single folder which is common to all projects. It's in Documents and it's called Reaper Media. You can change this directory using one of your own by clicking on Browse, choose the one you have created. For the tutorial, I created this called Default Recording which, as you can see, is empty. I click on Apply, and after saving everything, the file is placed in the desired directory. This folder must have an absolute and not relative path, because it is designed for cases where there is not any references as uh, unsaved projects. If you set it uh, relative, this without specifying its full path, Reaper ignores it. These three elements, including the checkbox, have interrelated functions. The checkbox put all the files of peaks in an alternative path. The peak files are those that allow you to see the waveform of the recorded signal. There are two other blank fields. Let's see how to use them all. I choose an alternative path that I have already prepared for this tutorial. It is called Rear Peak, and I click on Apply. I then choose to store all the peaks in this path. I open a project, and on the right you see the various directories, including Rear Peak and temporary folders. We will talk about in a few minutes. I record something. And as soon as I save it, the peak file is created in the Rear Peak folder, the waveform. Going to the project one, you see that the recorded audio file was stored up there. By unchecking the checkbox, however, the peak file is stored in the directory where the audio is recorded. You see it here. Now, through the user 
of File Explorer, I'm going to look for some audio samples in my library. I take these three ones for my example. As soon as I click on the audio, Reaper goes to the preview and as you see, the big file is stored in the directory where the sample is located. This is an avoidable condition by entering the path of this directory in the last field we are talking about. By doing so, the big file is stored inside the appropriate directory, without polluting the one of the samples. While I'm recording, the recorded PIC file goes in the folder where the recording audio file was formed. Now I delete everything and I import the sample into the project. Its PIC is formed in the alternative folder. Now I check the checkbox and I go back to turn to Reaper to store all the PICs within the appropriate directory. By recording, the PIC file is created in the alternate folder, together with those of the samples. So, according to my workflow, Reaper adapts itself to my needs, not vice versa. I now go to another samples folder, which has not been declared in the last field, and clicking on one of the samples, the PIC file necessarily forms in the samples folder and not in the alternative one. To store them in the PIC folder, I have to add the directory inside the last field, separating it with a semicolon. Reaper automatically adds it if you click on Browse, as you can see here. By selecting the sample, the big file is created in a, the alternative folder as mentioned. Share this video if you find it useful and support the channel either by becoming Patreon or maybe just pay me a drink. In both cases, below the links in the description. Your act is appreciated. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.